Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today is Mother's Day in the United States, so I wanted to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the human moms, pet moms, surrogate moms, stepmoms, aunties that are better than moms, and grandmothers and great-grandmothers out there. Thank you for all that you do and the contributions you make. All right, today's video is inspired by, well, the book that I'd been working on, the idea book, uh, Random Rectangles and Other Ideas, just an ideas journal. But I had been taking part in a challenge, a Facebook challenge from the group Junk Journal Ideas and Inspiration. It's Mandy and Justine's group. And this um, May is their one year anniversary since they've had a Facebook group. And they had all kinds of fun things, the collaboration I just took part in. And uh, there was a bingo piece. And in the bingo piece, they give you, you know, a bingo card, basically. And then each day, or not day, each spot, that's a better way to put it. Each spot has a concept, a junk journaling concept, something you can use in your journals. And so since I am wanting to fill up my bin with ephemera scraps so that I can just pull them as needed put into journals, I've been following along on this. And, and these are what I've made so far using these cha the challenge prompts. And I've completed a couple. And what I did was I just made a little card for each one and I put them in a stack. And then each morning I get up fairly early before school and I'll play with paper for a bit. And I'll take one of these prompts and I'll make something using my scraps based on the prompt itself. And then if, if I'm able to after school, I'll play a little bit more. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun to do and participate in this challenge and to see what other people do. So while I was doing this, I realized that quite a few of the pieces can be made with rectangles. And so I included those, the rectangle bits, in my idea book. And I'd had a question about how I closed this. This is just one of those buttons that pops up real high. And this is a piece of sari silk. And so I wrap the sari silk around the top of the button and then just tie a partial bow underneath. And that's just kind of how I've kept it closed. So there's the answer to that one. So I'm hoping that this one will be much click quicker than my last video. I jabbered on too much. And the first prompt was ruffle, which sent me down a rabbit hole because it's me and that's what happens. I made a ruffle and put it on the edge of my page. And you know, we, we do this with fabric, with paper, with anything we've got. And it makes a great little uh, tab, I guess, an edge for pay a page. But it also, you know, especially when it's paper, it can be used as a text spot. So you can put journaling on there. And so the first one is a ruffle. And I generally use paper, but and then I put a bit of lace on the top, but, but fabric works just as well. I sew mine, you do not have to sew. And here, let me show you some of the samples that I made. You know, here's one that's a real tiny one with some vintage tatting on the side that I had sewn on the side. And this one's a real tight one because I make a lot of smaller journals. And here's a ladder type one that, you know, just a bit longer and, um, another one with more of a plain paper and here's a real thin one with no ribbon or lace on top and then here is one that is kind of like this one and it's accordion pleat and what i mean by that is you can do these any which way you want so you can randomly just start folding you know when you've got a rectangular section of paper just fold it down and over right like this and then you can glue it down or sew it down, whichever you prefer. And then there is your, your border on your page or your, you know, you can make a belly band, a nice belly band too. You can also do it like I've done it here. I don't know how well you can see. And on this brief sample, I folded all of my folds in one direction. Well, here I alternated the folds. I folded to the right or to the top and to the left or the bottom and alternated them that way. And you can see on the back of the page, it kind of gives you a little bit different effect because I made it hang over the edge. If you don't like the back, just don't hang it over the edge. And you do that a very similar way, but instead of folding all of your folds in one direction, you alternate. And so I'll do that really quickly. Move all those to the side and see just a little itty bitty one. So here, and I don't use 
a scoreboard on this because I want them random. And I'll just fold in one direction and then I'll turn back and fold in the other direction. Sometimes it might be easier to lay this in front of you horizontally, but if you prefer to do it vertically, that's that's fine too. I don't know that it matters so much. And again, because I really want them random, I don't measure and I don't want it straight. Now you can make it straight, of course, but I, I really like the fact that it's not straight. So I will, you know, deliberately twist one more than another kind of a thing. And you can see there that they're folded in different directions. So I'll fold it to the left and then I'll fold it to the right. And you just do that all the way down. And if you need to tuck, if you want to make it longer, just tuck your next piece underneath the fold and it won't show as adding onto it, like that your paper's not long enough because it'll be hidden by that pleat or that fold. And then again, glue or sew it down and then put some ribbon in the middle or not. And there is a quick and easy page ruffle. Those are super, super to have on hand because they don't generally add much bulk and they're just a real pretty interest piece. All right, this, and I've made these before. It's just a long rectangular strip folded back upon itself as many times as you choose to, but it goes in with this theme. So I'm gonna make one here. And this one, this one just has, uh, this one I've turned into a belly band, so it goes top to bottom. Though you could put this up, at, glue it at the top so that it was just a top tuck. You could glue it at the bottom so that it's a regular pocket. Or again, like I've got it as a belly band. I've only got the two tuck spots here based on the folds to tuck in a little bits of ephemera or note cards or, or cigarette cards or li um, vocabulary cards and that type of thing but you can fold as many times as you want, as many times as you have room for to tuck in as much as you like. And it's just a rectangular sheet of paper or off cut of paper and it works great two-sided, but it doesn't have to be two-sided. And I will, maybe I'll show you how I did that. Okay. Oh, before, before I do that next piece, I have to say, we're going to be using some paper from, oh, which line is it? This line. And I apologize for butchering it. Atelier des Arts. One of my favorite journals I've ever made is just this little, I don't know, it, it was a one sheet wonder type of a folio. And I just really love it just because it's, uh, the paper is incredible. It's probably the favorite paper line I've ever used. And it's a Stamperia uh, brand paper and it has chipboard embellishments and it has just fussy cut bits and all, just all kinds of truly wonderful things and the colors they're they're bold colors but they're subdued if that makes sense they're not as bright as uh, some other paper lines and i really really love that about it and then, then this one just uses a variety of paper and, and this was my first uh, types of paper to include in a journal type journal and and then i put a center bit see there's a these are some of the um chipboard bits that they offer and I made a, a plastic pocket to put those in for front and back. And, you know, another little bit of a journaling space with another cut apart that they've gotten in the chipboard. And then the other sides of that paper. And then a pocket with some journaling in the back and this here. And then these are more of those fussy cuts. They're just, they're just lovely. They're great to use. And um, anyway, this is this is the book, right? This is the little tiny itty bitty journal and it, it just makes me happy. And so when I was putting this together, I thought, you know what? I've got a few bits and pieces left of that paper and I want to use every single bit of it be just because I like it so much. So for this, I'll be using this Atelier d'Arts for this fold. I'll show you how to do it. And I had very little of it left but I'm going to use one of the little bits that I've got left. And I use it for another piece in here too, just for the same reason. All right, so you've got a rectangular fold or a rectangular offcut or a rectangular scrap and, you know, two-sided. Choose whichever side you want to be on top. I, I don't know that it matters because both sides, bits of both sides will fold. The first thing I do is decide, and I do use a scoreboard for this because I find it just makes it a little bit easier for me. Often... I will do a five inch journal. Five inches is probably my favorite, uh, maybe. I don't know, I shouldn't say that because I like a lot of different sizes. But if I want this pocket to go from edge to edge, then I will measure that and I'll make my strip 
that length. My, I'll make my first fold at that length. But it doesn't have to. You can turn it and orient it this way so that you've got a top and a bottom piece, right? If, if you're wanting this to go on the top of your page and it can have a top and a bottom tuck and then a sideways belly band. So it's really, ver really versatile in that regard. I did this one uh, oriented horizontally, so I'll just make the one that we're doing here horizontally. If I were going to do it vertically this way, I would have cut my paper strip to run vertically on my page. This one happens to be cut horizontally, so I'll make it a horizontal uh, bit. All right, so I'm going to measure the width of my page or the width that I want it to be because it doesn't have to go end to end on your page. And in this one, I think I'm going to do four and a quarter simply because uh, maybe four. I like four. So I'm going to do it at four. I'm going to score this at four inches. And that's, and then I'm going to fold this paper back on itself. Now, this is my background piece, whatever the, the pocket's going to go on. And if you want it oriented in the other direction, just start on the opposite side. That part doesn't matter either. Then what I do is I look and see how much depth or how much reveal do I want. Well, if I make it a one inch reveal on this side, you're not going to really see anything of the art supplies. Whereas if I do it like at a two and a quarter inch, it's going to be a really wide pocket, especially since this is only four inches long. So I think on this one, I'll go to one and a half because I'll still see the art supplies, but at the same time, um, it won't, um, won't take up too much of my real estate. All right. So I've, oh, I did that backwards. D don't, don't listen to me. Just, just pretend I don't exist. I wasn't supposed to score this back piece. I was supposed to score this top piece. It's not going to show anyway, because this is going to be back down on the side and this is going to be covered. But do you see, I'm supposed to score it this way. Well, oops, and I want an inch and a half of this to show on this side. So I'm going to score, I'll fold it over, right? And since I want an inch and a half to show, I'll score it right here so that's an inch. And I'll move over just a smidge since I made that crease line. And then I measure how far that is. So that's one, two, about two and five eighths piece, uh, inches. So I'll put it here and I'll score at two and five eighths. I don't usually make it this complicated, but because I blew that. But you can see here, it works. And I, that where I scored it kind of hides my mistake. But you can still see the paint, which is what I really wanted, though I wanted to see the yellow paint. But that's okay, not a big deal. And then I'll score, push it down here. So this is going to be my first tuck or pocket, right? And then I am going to do the same thing on this side. How much reveal do I want? Well, I did one and a half inches on that side. So I want at least uh, about the same. But you know what? I'm going to do it a little bit smaller because of what is going to show here. So I'm going to cut this at the three quarter inch mark, which would mean I'm cutting it about an inch and a quarter. And so I'm going to make a cut here because I only want the three pockets. I could fold it over as much as I wanted if I wanted more pockets, but I want to save this piece because I have an idea for it. And I only want the two tuck spots. So to create my, I've got my first tuck spot. To create my second tuck spot, rather than folding this again, I'm just going to cut it off. And I said I was going to cut it off somewhere and I don't remember where I said I was going to cut it off. I don't want that word art to show simply because only part of it will show. So let's see, three quarters, right? So that would make it one and one quarter. So this top piece, I'm going to cut and use my trimmer and cut it at one and one quarter because that's the amount that I want to show based on the word behind it. I hope that's not confusing. You know, and if you don't have a, such a specifically designed paper like mine, it doesn't matter so much. See, I didn't want the T from art to show, which is why I covered it here. And a little tiny bit of it does show, but that's okay. I can roll it. It's rollable. There you go. And then the T doesn't show at all. And that will create my next pocket or tuck spot, I guess. 
So I folded it down. So I've got a tuck spot here, I've got a tuck spot here, and then I've got either my pocket or my belly band or my top tuck in the back. And then I've got my three spaces. So I'll ink this edge real quickly because the rest of it is. And if I were going to sew, like, um, I have a sample here for you. Oh, here we go. Here is a sample. There we go. I knew I had one. I had forgotten to clip on my microphone the first time I made this video. And I know I'm not always easy to hear, which is ironic because I'm a loud person. But there you go. All right, so here is my rectangular folded over type pocket. And if I were going to sew it, which is what I, what I usually do, I would first sew along this edge. It's not folded, it's not glued, it's not anything. I would just sew along this edge. And then I would fold it down, and then I would sew right along this edge. Then I would fold that down, and I would sew all the way around. So you can see here, sew this edge first, this edge first, and that way I still have a tuck. I'm not sewing it down to anything. And then sew this edge, to hold this, this little pocket tuck closed, right? So this edge, and then lay it down, and I'm not sewing this little tuck spot closed, and then I'd sew all the way around to give this look. And again, pocket or tuck, pocket or tuck, and then whatever I want in the back. And then I can, like the one I did here, I kept it wide on purpose because I knew I wanted to use that pretty birdie, and, um, I just added a tag or a label later on. But that is how you make that. And it's just kind of handy to have. And you can see this one's not as, as oriented um, uh, image-wise as the other. This is a compendium of Tracy's. And so you can see that you can lay it like this. And then you can have a side belly band, right? And you can have a top tuck and a bottom tuck. So super versatile, great to have on hand, and a super one for non-directional paper, but it works with directional paper as well. You just have to think about how you're going to orient it. All right, that is the second. I don't, know, I don't remember if I said it on this video or the previous video, but I've got five bits today, and most of them are quick. And darn it, I told myself I wasn't going to forget. Somebody had asked about stickers, and see how this... I trimmed the edge of the sticker off here, but I didn't trim the edge of the sticker off here. It kind of overlaps a little bit because I wanted those petals to show there. And the way you can do that, it's an old thing that we've done with card making for years and years. Um, just get baby powder or talcum powder or one of the anti-static little square tools and, and stamping. They're not spendy at all. You use them a lot of times to treat your paper before you um, stamp your ink and put your embossing powder on so that your embossing powder doesn't stick where you don't want it to stick. But anyway, it works for this as well. And you just put a little bit of the powder on the back of the sticker section that's showing, and it makes it so the sticker's not sticky, and you can still have the image out without losing the, or without having it stick down to your surface. So there's that. All right, this one, this is probably one of my very favorite things to do in a journal is especially with pretty paper you know paper that's just so pretty you don't want to cover it up or put a pocket on it but you want to include it and you still want to have writing space because it's a journal or photo space or however you choose to use your journals so this one one of my favorites you've got a flap or a lift and it can have a fussy cut image on it or not that's completely up to you and then it's got flip up journaling spaces, right? You've got all that space to write. Now I could have put this on another scrap of paper to make it into a belly band, but um, I don't want this journal to get too thick. And then I closed it with a strap and um, a little bit of Velcro and then an image that I felt worked well with it. Now this paper, this image, was a total splurge. I love this one almost as much as, as Atelier d'Art, and I apologize again if I butchered it, but it's a new Stamperia paper line called Vintage Library, and libraries and books are probably my favorite thing on the planet, other than my grandchildren, and um, love, love, love. And so when I saw that, that kit or that set released recently, I 
went nutso and I and I got all the things because absolutely love it. And so the mini journal that we're going to be making, I decided to do it the mini journal two ways. One with digital kit. The digital kits are papers that I told you I'm using for Tracy Fox. Love junk journals. And also with uh, scrapbook paper. I'll be using this line of scrapbook paper, the vintage library, vintage library from Stamperia because I love it. And anyway, and I had to use it in here. I told myself I wasn't going to, but oh my gosh, I just had to because I had to fondle this paper a little bit. And I love the way it went with Tracy's uh, tattered paint. That's the, the papers in the backgrounds on all of these um, in this journal are Tracy Fox Creative Love Junk Journals tattered paint. And they're all backgrounds. And they, are, they just go with so many things. They're gorgeous. All right, so how to make this. You don't have to have it oriented and flip up the way I do. Maybe you want just two pieces to flip up, or maybe you want four pieces, or maybe you want them to open to the right or to the left, or a gatefold, a center kind of a thing. And it's essentially the same process either, either way, whichever way you choose to do it. And um, here are a couple samples I made, because remember, this is not my first video, and I blew it with the microphone. So here's one that is... There was French doors in there. I guess it's the doors to the art studio and opened it up and had journaling space. And I, when I originally made it, I cut the French doors down the middle because it was a, a solid image. And then I put it on my backing paper and, and trimmed it down so that it fit. And then I realized that I should have made this one solid sheet and put my images down on the solid sheet. But uh, there was a fix. I just put another scrap of paper on the back and hinged them together and, and it works absolutely just fine. So this is hinged in the center. It doesn't have to be hinged, you know, to the right or to the left or top to bottom, what have you. It can, it can, it can work any way you want to flip it out. And then the one we were going to make in the other video is one of the windows in the kit. Um, I put some of the art pieces in the windows and you can see this one doesn't open in the center because I really wanted this quote, art is not just a painting, even though I used paints with it, but I really wanted that intact. So rather than cutting this window frame in the center, I cut it off to the side. And I still have all of, oh, I'm way up top, sorry. I still have all of that journaling space, but I've got, and I hope this whole thing isn't out of frame. Mm, well, we'll find out. But I've still got all of the journaling space inside, which is what I wanted. I've got the quote that I want, and I've got the little closure. And I just used some of the fussy cuts in the kit to add the paint to the top of that window, simply because I really liked it. So there are some options for you with, with using whichever paper you choose to use. On this one, on this sample, we're going to make... See, I could, you know, use this as well and just cut it down here and maybe make three or what have you. But I think what we're going to do is use this paper and we'll orient, let's go like this Corey, and there we go, and we'll orient it just like the one in the booklet. And I'm going to use this paper which is one side of the arts paper that has some art quotes and such on it. And it, it's just really a lovely piece of paper. And for the sake of ease, I think I'm going to cut it in about half. So we'll do two of these, but you can do three or four or what have you, which, whichever you want. And if I remember right, this is, and it doesn't even have to be perfectly half. Um, this is just over six inches, so I'll do it just over three. And again, I'm not going to worry too much if it's not exactly in the middle. And they're pretty close but like this. I just cut them in half. Then I'm going to, because it's so much easier to ink the edges before you glue them down, I'll glue, I'll ink that edge and I'll ink this edge. I had inked around the other edges prior to starting the video just to save time. Now what I want to do here is I cut this scrap of paper, uh, off cut of coffee dyed paper, to fit. Now if I put this down here and glue it, what's going to happen is it's not going to fold the way I want it to fold to lift up. So I'm going to put my top flap on the bottom of this and then I'll fold it over 
to get the amount of reveal I want. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to glue this. Uh, here's here's a glue paper. I'm going to glue the back of this, right? I want it to go this direction. So I'll put some glue on the back. And let's move that out of the way a bit. And I'm just using the Yoohoo glue stick here. I still prefer the Gorilla, but they're not making that anymore. And, you know, I admit it, I was wrong. I like glue stick for certain things. I have long believed glue stick is for kindergartners, but I do use it, and so I must be a kindergartner at heart. All right, I'm going to put this, glue this down on the bottom. And I had just cut it to width prior, just for the sake of ease. Okay, line it up straight. And I generally tend to press it down. I have a ice scraper. But, you know, whatever you use to press it down. All right, so I've glued it and I've pressed it down. Then I will fold it so that it lifts up. And I'll, I can score it, but I don't really need to. I can just lay it right here and push it down. Now, what I did in the previous one is I just cut it off right here at the bottom, cut it off flush. But I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to make it a little bit longer so that it acts like the glue or the, the support in the piece that's going to go below it. So I'm, I'm giving myself an inch. You don't need to, but I'm just giving myself an inch. So I want this back one just a smidge longer than the front. And you can see I didn't fold it perfectly straight, but that's okay because I can wiggle this around a little bit and get it straight. And I inked this, but since I just glued it on, I'll give it a little bit more ink. And that way, if I've got a little bit of that color or the paper showing, it's not a perfect fold. Well, it's not going to show because it's all inked and it's all happy. All right, so this is the first of my two pieces. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this. Oops, that's this one. The second of my two pieces. I'm going to glue it. Make sure it's long enough before I do that. Is it? Yeah, it oh, is it barely. Holy schmoly, I guess I didn't didn't plan. Oh, yep, it's going to work. Okay, good. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this the second section on the bottom of my paper so that I can fold it in half. All right. And I don't even know what this is. Oh, Tacoma Public Schools. That's where I work. All right. No glue on there. Okay. I'm going to glue the back of this again. I'll move that out of the way. I don't want the glue to get on there. And I'm going to glue it to the bottom so that I can lift up. Now it looks like I am, no, I guess maybe it's not. If I need to trim it, I'll trim it. Yeah, I might need to trim it here a little bit. Okay. Yeah, this one I'll need to trim. Okay, and then I'll just push this down. And I'm going to do the same thing and fold it over so that it's lined up mostly evenly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Lined up straight and evenly right here. Okay, so it's going to lift up this way. And I'll ink that edge. And I'm going to trim this excess off. And I don't want to trim the sides on here of the cardstock that's on the front because that lines up and matches with the piece on top of it. So I have to be real careful to make sure that's straight. I could have used scissors, but this is just a little bit faster. And there's a smidge over here. So I'll take that off as well. So if you don't cut it perfectly or get it lined up perfectly, you can fix it afterwards. Or maybe it wouldn't bother you to leave it the way it was. And, and that's fine too. All right, so I've got the two pieces now. And so I'm just going to lay this first, the second one, right on top of the first, like this. And I'll glue it down just in this section. And I can see here that I just didn't cut it straight. Maybe I was in a rush. So I'll trim just a tiny bit off that so it doesn't show. Okay, I think that should do it. 
And same thing, I'm going to put the glue right here just on the section where I'm attaching the two pieces together or the three pieces if I were doing a trifold like that and laying it down so that they match up. Okay. Just like that. And there is a tiny bit here and most people wouldn't notice it or it wouldn't bother, but this is me and it does bug me. So I'll trim that off. And a little bit, nope, right there is fine. And that is how, then this piece, I could either glue directly in my book or I could glue top and bottom and I've got this lift up reveal. And I would ink the edges because I like inked edges just like that and so there's your lift up now to do the flap that closes it that holds it closed you don't even have to you can see it it lays just fine exactly the way it is but i really like that little flap because it allows you to get some decorative elements and such on on the front um, sometimes this will be my like in here in this case i loved that stack of books so that was my focal image other times it's the uh, paper itself, this paper, the background paper itself, that's this, the focal image. And then maybe I would just use a really, really thin one so that I could keep that paper showing. But here I wanted to showcase the stack of books. So on this one, there's a daffodil there. There's a couple daffodils and, and I really love them. So I'll use Velcro dots. And this is one of the two different sizes I use. Velcro brand, thin, clear, fasteners, these are the 3 8 inch, so I would imagine that's these little guys. 3 8 of an inch is not quite half an inch. Yeah, and these are larger than half inch. So these 3 8 inch is this size, and then this is probably the next one up, maybe 5 8 inch or something like that is my guess. And this is a nice wide one, so I'll probably use the larger circle. But those are the, the different types of Velcro dots I use. So I'll grab double-sided Velcro dots. They're fairly thin. I don't mind the bulk that they add, but then again, I don't dislike bulk. So I try to minimize it to a degree, but not to the extent that I don't use it. And then I'll put the Velcro dot on the back. I add a little bit of glue just because I put my fingers on it so much that I worry that I don't get enough sticky on there. And then I'll put glue on the back of that and line it up where I want it. I want it about in the center, though again, it certainly doesn't have to be. And then I'll press down. Then lay down the top and I'll fold this top bit over. And I'm not sure what language that is, maybe Italian. Stamperia is Italian company, I believe, or Spanish company, one of the two. Though I think it's Italian. And, um, and then I'll get ready to glue that down. So you can see it, there's wiggle room. So you don't have to make it perfectly straight when you first start because you know, you're only adhering it on the bottom with that, that one dot. So I will make sure that it's straight and then I'll flip it over and then I'll put a little bit of glue underneath like now, I generally put a bit of tape on there because I didn't put a ton of glue because that's thin copy paper on the back and I don't want it to show. So if I were to use this as a belly band, this would keep it nice and smooth and flat. Absolutely not necessary, but because I didn't put a lot of glue on this because I didn't want it to show through underneath here, that's why I did it that way. I didn't want the glue to show. And I, again, would ink all these edges. And then that is my flip down. And then or my closure, then I really liked this quote. So I might use this on top of my closure. And I'll put that there. Mostly centered. And then there was a couple little fussy cut butterflies. And um, the end of this quote says, make art and you will have wings to fly. So it, it seemed to be calling for a butterfly. So I fussy cut it out of the paper and I'm gonna put it on here. And then a bit later I'll put, well, I guess I can do it now and just put it to the side to let it dry. So I'm gonna put that fussy cut butterfly right here. And then 
I will use my Nouveau Deluxe Crystal Glaze. And, oh man, this one's almost empty. I have more. But, and put the Nouveau Deluxe Crystal Glaze right on there and then put it aside so that it dries. And then it just gives a tiny, tiny bit of dimension to that butterfly and makes it pop out or stand out a little bit. And then when it's ready, I just glue it into my book, either as a belly band or just as a flap. Either either way works just fine. All right, and that is product number three, and that's probably the one that takes the longest. So, or rectangle number three for today. Ruffle, the fold over, and then the flip up. All right, this one. This one was kind of an offshoot. And basically what this is, it's another version of a ladder. And we've seen ladders a gazillion times, right? A little ladder pocket where you accordion pleat a piece of paper or a rectangle, and then you glue down the edges to make yourself a little tuck spot. It's kind of the version of the Tim Holtz die that has the slots in it with, without a die cut and slots. So, you know, we've, we've seen these. And as I was making my ruffles, I thought, well, you know, that's essentially an accordion fold. And, and what if I, because that's kind of what I do, what if I did it without closing off the edges and I folded all the pleats the same? I folded them nice and neat and all the same or similar or straight. Well, here you can see there's different depths on the way that my folds were because this was what I was playing with. And then I can have them stick out the side. Like this is a really shallow fold. So it's a, a shallow little pocket there, but this one is a little bit deeper. And that way, if I wanted to, I could have the pieces that I tuck into it. If they were a little bit wider, they can, they can hang out the side because nothing's holding that piece down. And then I would glue this on my page in my book. And I'll show you here. I did it here with the measurements evenly. So I can just tuck these little bits and pieces in and they don't, whoops, that's upside down. They don't have to fit perfectly because I haven't closed off the edges. So I can put all these bits in. Like if I were to put a little notepad in here, then I would have all these bits and pieces to tuck into or onto my pages when I was done. Okay, and I used a plain piece of paper, but you could use, you could use colored, of course, or you could use patterned. You know, just the idea of it, it can overflow. And, you know, if this was solid paper and, and this was solid paper, you'd really focus on the tickets or labels or ephemera and such in there. And so that was my impetus for this little pocket. Now, having played with it a bit, I, I learned a few things. This is a two inch fold, right? These are all two inches long. And then I made the depth three quarters of an inch to hold this size ephemera. I wouldn't go any bigger than that because what happens is you've got not enough tight. See how it's, um, it doesn't hold it tight. Now, if it put several things in there, it's going to hold it because it's going to be inside of a book, but just be careful about how deep you make your fold and how deep or how long you make your top fold. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Just be mindful. So the one that I am going to do, I'm going to use my scoreboard and I am going to, let's see. Now, this is just the top of, I think it was scrapbook paper that I salvaged or something. I'm going to do mine at one and three quarters. So these two holes are going to be, think Corey, if I do this at one and three quarters, those are going to show. All right, so let's not do it that way. If I, oh, here we go. Okay, so I'll do it like this. I'm gonna score this at one and three quarters, right? And then I'm going to score it three quarters of an inch more. So this one's at one and three quarters, so I'll do this one at two and a half. So that's one and three quarters for my first score mark, and then three quarters for my second. And I'll show you why, because it's going to fold down and you're not going to see those holes and then it's going to fold back up. And that is what makes my little tuck spot, right? That's what makes this little, little bit here to hold the piece. Now I could do the math and figure out, okay, another one and three quarters would be four and a quarter and then another would be five. And I, I could measure it all that way, all the way across. 
But honestly, it, I find it gets a little confusing, especially if you're thinking about other things and it's easy to make a mistake. So my preference is, you know, if you wanted it to be one and a half and a half inch um, you know, um, tuck spot, that's, that's absolutely fine. You can choose based on the size journal you have and what you want. I'm putting glue on here to hold it down, but I'm not putting glue inside the pocket, little pocket tuck. I'm putting it underneath just so, so I'm still got that place to put my tickets or my items, my ephemera, but I'm holding it in place and back so that I know how long my, my finished completed piece is going to be. And I'll do the same thing again. So I want one and three quarters. So that would be four on here, right? One and three, so four. And then I need another three quarter inch fold for the underside. So I'll score it at four and three quarters. And that way my reveal will be the same on each one, right? Yeah, it should be. In a perfect world, it should be. No, see, I didn't count it right. One and three quarters, not two and a quarter, one and three quarters. And that's not going to show because, all right, sorry about that. Count, Corey. One and three quarters is one and three quarters. So this should be at three and a half. And then this one should be three quarters. So that would be at one and So three quarters more. I'm at three and a half, so I need to go four and a quarter. And see, talking makes me mess this up, which is, again, why I do it this way. But you can see here, even though I blew it on those extra creases, it's not going to show. I've got one and three quarter, one and three quarter. And, you know, if you don't want all your pockets the same depth, you, you don't have to measure. You can randomly decide where you want them. So this is going to be the uh, front or the top. And here, okay, I've got my pocket, I've got my pocket. So I'm going to lift it up and glue this down here. And again, it just helps me remember where my pocket is. And I'm not gluing down my pocket. All right. And then I've got another tuck spot. Now I can move this down here so that I don't mess it up. I'm at one and I need one and three quarters. So that just makes it a little bit easier. I don't mess up. And then I need another three quarters inch so I'll go to the half and just like that all right uh, but I've got these holes here and it's in the wrong spot well th that's an easy fix if you're wanting to make them a little bit longer you just tuck another piece oh, this one's the same way down into your groove to make sure that it doesn't show and I'll show you what I mean by that so if I were to score it just like this on my next one and that's let's see and this would this would show horribly so I could put this piece here and add another piece that's solid without these holes in it down in here and then score and fold that one so let's see this would be scored at one and three quarters right here and this would go down like that and like that and then I could just cover that bit up so that it doesn't show see I could just cover that bit up and that is how you make this and then oh then what I'll do this is showing and I don't particularly care because I'll fold it down in the back and I'll put something in there but I could hide that or cover that if I chose to with this well you know what just for the heck sake of it I'll do it so you can see what I mean quite enough off. Should have chose paper without holes in it, but I was showing you I really truly do use scraps. All right, and then I will put this down in here. And that is my one and three quarter inch reveal. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. And I'll cut that extra bit off. If this was another longer piece, I could just continue right on. I wouldn't have to stop there. All right, and then fold that down. 
Okay, see, so you can see I've got, um, this one has four of those little tuck pockets. Then if I were wanting to make this into a belly band in my book, what I would do is, oh, I put it away. Well, dang now, but here, I'll grab this scrap, this scrap in and get a, a long scrap of coffee dyed paper. Then I flip it over. Um, I didn't glue that one, did I? Let's glue this down in the back so that it stays nice and flat. And then it's folded, it's glued and folded just like the other pieces. So I don't really even need that. That's just extra bulk. I will trim it off. Then I'll glue it down on this in the back, right? And that holds it all in one piece. And that way when you're taking, making this into a tuck or a belly band, it doesn't get in the way. You don't have anything to catch. And it makes a nice solid piece for your book or your journal. I'll glue here. This is more than I need. I'm just putting the glue on extra and quick. Okay, and I will lay this down like so. I'm going to cut that off and get my glue scissors. So I'll cut it below the reveal spot in the back like that. So when I glue this in my book, in my journal, some people call them books, some people call them journals. When I glue this down, I have a nice, neat little spot to tuck things and it won't catch, right? And then I've got my space for my tickets, my little bits of ephemera, my fussy cuts, my whatever. So you can see. So there you go. It's another version of a ladder page, but it, it um, allows you to put wider things in than, than you may otherwise. And you can see here, this is how I did it with just a tuck spot in the back or a belly band in the back and a journaling card. All right, I think this is the last one for today. Oh, good. This one is a variation of, but it, instead of, well, maybe it's a variation. Oh, it's a variation of this one. But instead of using two pieces, it just uses one piece. And you can orient it, like just like the other, you can orient it uh, vertically or horizontally. And this one I just used horizontally and made a, pocket in the back. So you just fold this over and here we had, we flipped it up and we used two pieces and then we've got a, a pocket inside and then you flip it over and you've got a pocket in the back. So you would, you know, tuck this on the side, a removable pocket. Well, this one is adhered permanently and instead of moving the paper to the back, we just moved the paper to the front. And what I mean is there's a flap and you can put a notepad or journaling card here. And normally I would put a notepad here, but I'm really trying hard to, to make it thinner for this journal. And then it's folded over and I've got a tuck spot here for, you know, a, a, an additional notebook or a place to put a quote or a photo or what have you. So it's one long rectangle again, and I folded it a couple different times. It's real easy, really easy to do. And I'm sure you've seen it, but in a rectangle book, it kind of makes sense to put it in there. And I'll put that, put this back wherever it belongs. There we go. All right, and the way, let's see. Did I grab a Atelier de Arts paper for that? I think I might have. I don't know, maybe I used it. Hmm. hmm. Oh, I used it for this. I was going to use it for that. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll just go with plan B. Here are a couple quick samples. So you can orient it this way with your tuck at the bottom. It's really a trifold, basically. So one, two, three folds. Oh, I did it again. I went way too high. Sorry. It's a trifold, really, um, with one, two, three folds. And then you've got a tuck spot. And that's oriented vertically. You can turn it and or orient it horizontally. See, I did this way before I even got into junk journaling, back when it was just regular paper arts. I've had this for a long time. So it's, it's not new. Um, I'm sure you've seen it. But again, in the interest of... A rectangular journal. Okay, so I've got this piece and um, 
This might be a little bit wider than I would normally use, but that but that's okay. You know, there's no reason if I were to use a big journal, I couldn't do this. All right, I just have to decide which side. Okay, so I think I'll do it like this. I've got three pieces. And again, you just pick what you want the reveal to be. So maybe my little tuck spot on the side, and I'm not even gonna use a scoreboard. My little tuck spot on the side is one window pane because of the paper that I've got. And then I will use my bone folder and fold that down. All right, I like to take a little divot here, but you certainly don't have to. Um, I, you know, use my circle punch like on this one, right? Take a little divot out so that you know it's a little side tuck, but you don't have to. And with the, this paper being this way, well, I have room for a little one, so maybe I will. What the heck? Okay. Yeah, see, it wasn't really necessary on this, but I would ink this edge, take out a little divot so that you can see that it's a tuck, and there you go. And then glue this bit down just top and bottom. That is messy glue, but that's okay. Glue it down top and bottom. And that is my first fold and my left-hand side. And you can always flip this and, and change the orientation to open to the right or open to the left. See, this one opens to the right. If you flip it around, you could open it to the left and just fold this side, fold your right side first. If you want it to open on the right, fold your left side first. If you want it to open on the left, fold your right side first. Either way, it's just fine. And then I'm going to fold this like, again, this is going to open out to the left. And so I want it to come a little bit farther than this first fold that I made. So I want it to go just a little bit more. And again, maybe I'll choose my reveal. Those are really pretty. Mm, those are really pretty. Maybe I want all of those to show. So I'll fold it like this. Yeah really like that so I want all of those to show and I'll crease it down it just depends on the paper that you're working with right and then that's here where I would put my journaling spot or my notepad like I have on the sample you know journaling spot or notepad and you can still see the colors and such around it you still got your tuck on the left you've got your journaling spot or notepad and then your right is your closure and you can choose where you what you want to see and what you want to show i think i like a little i've got green there and green here so i think i want that green to show yeah i kind of like that all right and then i'll fold it down now you can round the corners or not that's completely up to you on here you can see i've got it rounded the other one i think this one i just squared off the corners you can leave them are angled off the corners like a tag, or you can leave them squared. I'm going to round these because why not? And there you go. That is your. I didn't do that very straight, did I? Recrease that. And there is your little flip. Now, to hold this closed, I would just choose one of the little bits and pieces in this kit. I don't even know. I haven't I haven't pulled them out and played with them. But I would choose a little piece, one of the little pieces that's left over and anchor it closed that way. Well, maybe not the heart, but I would use one of these pieces to tuck it in on the side. I've got all kinds of bits in here and some of them are larger than others. That I think might be too big. A window on the window and this is just the wrong size, you know, a tube of paint. But but you're seeing the idea. You you find an image or a label, basically. You could use, oh, never would I use that, but you could use a label to hold it closed. And then you just glue it down on one edge and you tuck it in on the other. And that's the way that works. Wow. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, I appreciate you and I hope that you find inspiration from this. And I apologize if I, you know, get a little sidetracked at times, but that is kind of how I roll. My brain goes in way too many directions at once, and it's why I have a squirrel brain. Reminds me, somebody asked about vintage lace and where I get the vintage lace and such. And this lady, Lisa Jane Smith, sells sometimes at Sacred Mementos. And that is a Facebook group, Sacred Memento 
is, I believe that's an S. It's like I just scribbled it wrong. And Patty is the owner of the group and she does auctions every Monday and Thursday night. And sometimes it's just what like Patty's got for sale, but she has other guest sellers as well. And Lisa was on one time and I got um, some of the vintage lace, like this was a little thank you, but I got these incredibly beautiful pieces. Now, I a lot of times go to estate sales or auctions or, or that type of thing to get my vintage lace. But if you don't have that option open to you, this is another venue for you to look at. And look how gorgeous all of these old laces. A lot of these are handkerchiefs, but the way I use them, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll cut it up and, and put little bits and pieces here and there. And a, a tatting. Oh man, I love it. Look at the double tatting on that. That is just stellar. So that is another place, another source that, you know, if you don't have a uh, the opportunity to attend auctions or go to estate sales or that type of thing. You can do an online auction like I did with this one. Lisa Jane Smith was the seller and Patty Lang is the group owner of Sacred Mementos and she does live auctions on Mondays and Thursdays. I mean, every once in a while there's an exception, but that's, that's usually what the way it is. All right. Thank you all very much. Take care. Happy Mother's Day and happy creating.